Well, um, I don't know. I just want to do a quick one. It's not going to be quick, actually. So, I understand there's a lot of um, bias, sentiment. The Northerners have their own version of the story. The Southerners have their own version of the story. Even in the South, uh, different people have different versions of the story. So, yeah, I'm going to turn right. Google. So, the thing is, what really happened? Like, let's go back to the beginning. It's not, you know, you know, the thing about Nigeria is that we're now like in the Middle East. We choose where we want to start telling the story. Oh, Palestine sent the rocket first, so we sent Iron Dome to blow, blow them up. Oh, they're on our lands. That's how the Middle East is right now. There's no, except you go back to the beginning, beginning, then you can solve the problem of the Middle East. I told my dad something, I said, I better resolve this thing before you die. Because once your generation dies, <laughs> it's going to be, oh, my grandfather said, and there will be nobody to correct it. Um, because it's not just by being another state or nation. Palestine and Israel are two different nations, but guess what? It's still going on, ongoing till they die. It's never going to end. It will never end. It's not about sentiment. Let's look beyond all these things and begin to think differently. Uh, I, I wasn't surprised that most people who are intelligent, I thought should have known about the stories that happened, are thinking I'm flipping the narrative. <laughs> Right, like I'm flipping the narrative. People don't know what happened. But I realize that when it's somebody they respect, they now listen to it. But if it's me, they come and attack and write all manner of things. Oh, how dare you flip the narrative? You have this, this syndrome. Yo, guys, guys, guys. It's, yes, the Igbos. The southerners were very hardworking and very progressive. We 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 um, advanced well, fast. I don't want to go back to when the Portuguese came and invaded us, or when this um, bunch of this long lived between human being sat down and used ruler to divide us, or when they amalgamated the the northern and the south and the western protect. They should have never amalgamated the country. But because they found oil, they did it so they can have a fair share of the oil. Nigeria was a business, man. Nigeria was not a country. It was a business. Business, right? So they merged us. And then guess what? They secreted the whole... Um, check The first con constitution that was written was done on purpose to create division amongst us. I mean, together we rallied around for an independence. I mean, we rallied around for independence together. We didn't have a problem with each other. Now they noticed that and now created the division and now divided us and started that whole northern, southern, this, 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 that, that, that. It was the freaking British. It was not the Nigerians because we had a common, common struggle. We wanted independence. Nigerians were just like, we can't keep doing this. And then guess what? Oh, we're gonna give you independence. And then they added a poisonous clause to the constitution. Okay, that's fine. After that, what happened? Um, the South wins the election because they already divided everything. But then they gave Prime Minister to the North. All strategic, right? Let's leave that. Then the reason that happened was that the first set of people, the first ethnicity to ever resist the British oppression was the Igbos. And guess what? It was even the women. <laughs> About women's riots. So they knew this bunch of people are just not good to be held down. We have to find a way to keep them bound. And eventually, the West would learn from that. There was a particular woman in the West who also heard about what the Abba women did and now also started her own riot in Lagos. And then Fela's mother now you know, not like she was even the one who did everything. Now, kind of wore the shoes and made it look like she was the one doing the whole thing. Point was, the resistance started from the Igbos. Of 
course, the slave master would find a way to neutralize that. People who invaded you would have a way to do it. So they did, right? And they kept poisoning the minds of the northerners. It was not... See, we have to understand what's going on. We're trying... We're trying to kill cancer. The effect of cancer without going to the root and uprooting it from where it started. We're here fighting um, amongst ourselves when the enemy is out there up up north towards the left side of the north. Um, and saying running running Britain the way they want. Uh, it was the British that that you know did all the things they did and also supported the massacre of the Igbos. It was the British, right? The Aburi are called, the reason it went, let me not go to Aburi, let me go back to um, when the, some guy started, in, you know, saying evil things about the Igbos, that Igbos are like, <laughs> we're like leeches. Like anywhere we go, we just want to take over. That if you hire an Igbo man today, next thing he wants to take over. Right onto the ramp to I oh crap. He said if you hire an Igbo man today, he next thing he wants to um, take over the business. You know, those, those those are the narratives that are being being spread. But we didn't really care. It wasn't just the Igbos, even the Southerners, like people from Akwai Bomb, check out those guys that were in the Biafran army. They were not just Igbos. Zob was not even he's, ideally his Delta Igbo, right? So and some some Delta Igbos say they're not Igbos. Like that's the picture of what it was at the time. And then there was corruption. The Zeke, Saldana, the one, Akintola, all of them were corrupt. And then this bunch of zealots felt like uh, they could, you know, purge the nation by themselves. If Arjuna, you know, came up with the master plan, Zogu stand up there. There was another Yoruba guy that nobody mentions, but he was also part of, he was the youngest. Now, it was the South. The South got tired of the corruption that was happening in Nigeria and wanted to eliminate every single civilian leader that was corrupt. And then somehow, amongst themselves, they couldn't carry it all out. And then, guess what? Zeke and uh, Obara escaped or they were ticked off. We don't know, but they escaped. So the massacre happened, but our the only people who were not killed were Igbos. So, and then the next thing, Iransi, you know, intercepts and stops the coup and then proscribes himself, Supreme Leader. The same thing I hear from some people. Supreme Leader. Of course, of course, it looked like we planned to take over the country. Oh, we're like, oh no, but they should have known. They, should, they shouldn't know anything. This is how they felt. Yes, Ojuku was also trying to he, he also stopped some of the coups and everything but that was not how the north saw it that's not how they saw it let's start reasoning like human beings and without sentiment and guess what after the Saldana was killed the Igbo officers in the mesh and the Igbos there started gloating you know oh yeah yeah he's dead now how do you gloat in somebody's okay yeah it wasn't their land per se because it was one Nigeria right but in the midst of these people, you had the infantry to be gloating that, yes, it's good that the Saldana is dead. Of course, it incited the killings. And that's what started the pogroms. And they started killing people. Take exit 149. But guess what? That wasn't all that happened. There are also killings in the south of the northerners. So there was a retaliation in the south. Yes, Ojuku did not do that. Ojuku sent people back. But there was a retaliation. I've also seen that when I was growing up. Hmm? When I was growing up, anytime there was a war, there was a killing in Joss. People in Amansa where they would go and kill Amansa people. And in Omnichia, they would go and kill people in Amansa. So it's something that has been happening. Let us tell this thing as it is. And stop reducing the story just to suit the narrative. Until we say it exactly how it is, it's not going to change anything. Hmm? I'm not change the narrative and behaving like Zeke and behaving like who is he? I don't even know who Zeke is. The point is that all, all I'm trying to say is that we have to start telling these stories exactly how they are. 
you can't change history and expect to find healing. Mm -mm. The officers and the Igbos, the southerners, not even just Igbos, up north, after the killing of the southerner, who was like a god to them, we are gloating. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's How do you do that? How do you in your... Anyway, let me not even talk about it. So it only helped to paint the narrative that the Igbos are domineering. That was already a, the whisper, the rumor that we were domineering. Meanwhile, it was not just the Igbos, though. It was the South. The South. There was Delta. There was Aquaibom. There was Cross River. There was Yoruba. In that thing. There was a do in that coup. And when the North decided to retaliate, they killed every Southerner. Not just the Igbos. Let's also get that straight. Then BBC, of course, like I said, it was Britain. Now painted the narrative Igbo pogrom. Because the Igbos were the first to resist their oppression. It was the Abawi men that were the first to resist the oppression, the taxation of the British. And they used machine guns against them. These women did not back down. They were like these ones. Mm -mm. So they found a way to neutralize us. And that was by sowing discord amongst the Nigerians. Now you hear some northerners say, oh, without the, the, the Igbos, Nigeria will not go forward. They know. But at the same time, oh, there's a narrative that they don't know where it's from. It's from the British. Oh, Igbos are dominating. It's not from the northerners because they know that when we even come to the north, we help to develop the place. We help to do things. Their minds were poisoned by those who long live the Queen people. Anyway, because how do you explain the friendship between Ojuku and Gowon? How do you explain the fact that somebody like Nzog was born in Kaduna? Like, how do you explain all that? Like, how do you explain that? How were they comrades, uh, camarader, camaraderies, or comrades and, and, and respectful of each other? It was the British that was so in the Discord. But y'all don't want to listen. Now, these were already a people who who um, invaded us, enslaved us, even painted another narrative that we sold ourselves. How do you sell yourself to someone that owns you? Now, so they didn't just create problem in Nigeria. They created problem amongst Africans in diaspora. Now, Africans think we are the ones that sold them. How do you sell somebody when you don't own yourself? Like, doesn't even make sense. How do you sell somebody when you don't own yourself? So it's the same narrative, but you people are not listening. Everybody's being sentimental. Oh, it's in the book. Which book? Who wrote the book? Seriously, who wrote the book? So this whole Nigerian saga and problem, until we begin to tell the story just as it is, well, see, eh? Very soon we're going to be worse than the Middle East. That's that's and that's my fear. I'm afraid that's going to happen. And by then our parents will be dead. Then it will not be uh, what my father said, my mother said. Hey, <laughs> chineken. Even ordinary, my pastor said, my pastor said is irritating. Now you can now imagine when a whole war or discord amongst nations, whether we become a different nation or not, will be my father said, my mother said, we'll be doomed because. You don't understand that Nigeria is surrounded by Muslim countries. Niger, check around. So, if the Igbos are now finally a nation, you see what's happening to Israel. <laughs> okay. Aneiku, na go chinti na ahe sula. Aneiku ane me obro obro aneiku. We talk. You think we are just talking nonsense? Oh, why don't you gand? Why don't you go? Eh, you gand lead now. Why don't you lead? You think leadership is all about making noise? They don't know lead leadership is also about educating people. What What do you think that is? Think you think educating people is not leadership? See ya. The problem is not with the north. The problem is not with the south. The problem is with the people that created the business, Nigeria. 
We are here bickering and yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and they are there smiling. Hmm? Um all I can say is we need to have these conversations like siblings would do. Hey, I don't like what you did. Oh, what happened? You killed us. Oh, but you killed us. Because I remember about a month ago, Chi Chi Choma told me that during George Floyd, she posted something. And then this her friend just goes and picks only a line from what she posted and said, How could you say that? But you keep you guys killed us. And then she didn't understand because the girl was from the north. And Chama is Igbo, obviously, from the south. So this girl lived in, lived, lives, lives in America, but has a northern heritage. And then I listened to Chama lament, like she was really pissed. She was like, and I thought she was my friend. I was like, no, this person is not your friend. Cut her off. She's like, I thought it was my friend. I'm like, she's not your friend. Cut her off. You know, I mean, it's even dangerous. Imagine if you're with somebody like that, she'll kill you. You know, and then Chama asked her, so are you trying to justify the fact that we were killed? You know, the number of people you killed. So is it because if I do something wrong, you now kill me? Then I was still sentimental. I'm not going to lie. I said, Choma, cut her off. That's not right. But after I stopped talking, we ended that call. And I started going into all manner of research, talking to people, doing research. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, I was like, oh, crap. And the thing about change is that for you to have a change of mind, you have to be open to divergent views. Views that are not like yours. <laughs> About a week after I decided to call Chama again. And um, she said, she just started telling me. I, I waited for her to explain. She said, oh, she had made, settled with the girl. That she realized that we actually um, did a lot. That a friend who is half Kogi and half Igbo told her some things that happened during the war. Now, her dad is Igbo, but not really Igbo. Like Delta Igbo, like how she said it, not me. Her mom's from Kogi. And they said how um, the marriage did not almost work because the the Kogis had something against the Igbos because the Igbos pillaged and raped them during the war. That's from her friend. And then um, that even before her dad, also her grandfather married, there was also this division amongst the Igbos. And the, so... The thing with people who are biracial, by tribal, by anything, is that we understand different parts of the story. We don't just stick to one because, unfortunately, we are the two people. So you begin to find a solution to the problem because you're in the middle. But when you're just purely a pure, pure, pure breed Igbo, or pure breed Hausa, or pure breed American, or whatever you are, you think that every other thing they're saying is wrong. I started doing research. Of course, I spoke to my dad. And I realized that some other guy had already written it, but nobody talked about it. The idea was not to kill just the northerners, or the idea was for everybody, but it went south. The Yoruba guy is reading about it. Why are people not talking about that? Now, the North thinks it was deliberate. We need to have these conversations because if we don't have these conversations, we are spreading our own narrative down south that we were mothered. They are spreading their narrative that up, up north that we are domineering. Let me tell you, even after you become a separate nation, it's not going to end, especially with religions as toxic and strong-headed as Christianity and Islam. It's never going to end. Never end. Um... And that is not what you want your children or grandchildren to come into. Um, there was a rumor, not really a rumor though, that the Igbos were domineering because we are very, you know, the thing about Igbos, we, we don't, we're not like every other tribe, no offense. We, we don't believe in hierarchy. We're not hierarchical, we are egalitarian, which means if you can do it, just do it. We believe in spreading, improving, increasing. And we're not supposed to be proud. We're not the proud people. Whoever is proud is not really Igbo or Igbo. We are egalitarian. We, that's who we are. Now, or even our passenger who was part of the people that killed the Igbos said that the problem is that people think that when an Igbo man rules Nigeria, that he will sell the country. But that when an Igbo man rules Nigeria or Igbo person, woman or man, rules Nigeria, he's going to take Nigeria to the globe. Now, Nigeria will become recognized. They know this. They know this. We don't do daddy, 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 daddy. It's not our culture. We are those ones who will liberate everybody. 
we will liberate you, liberate ourselves, make everything fair and just for everybody. That's who we are. The British didn't like that. Because we resisted them first. And, of course, if you worked in corporate organizations, you understand that once your boss doesn't like you, he'll mess you up. And that's exactly what it's been the whole time. Um, unfortunately, uh, we let it ruin us because, I mean, how did comrades who worked together to kick the white people out suddenly become enemies? How? Because somebody was in their ears. Somebody was poisoning their minds. Now, it's normal. The oil is in the south. There's no oil in the north. But then, because of the mass landmass of the north, the, the south owns the oil. I mean, these are global laws written by these people, these same people. So, the only way the south has oil is because the northern landmass made us have the oil. And that was why they refused to let Ibos go the first time. People are blaming Gowon, blaming the North. It is not the North, it's the British government. Why did Ojuku um, um, execute, was it the Fajuna? Somebody too, like few people who went to go and talk, have talking terms with the British in order to not go, go to war. Because he felt that that was sabotage. They went to talk, have talks with the British. So the British knew about the war. They are the ones behind everything. They armed Nigeria. They twisted the news. They changed it from Southern coup to Igbo coup. It was all the media. It was media propaganda that helped to ruin the whole thing. The problem is that the text. Texts are hard to read. Read it with your bias, your emotion. And the problem with talking is that it's going to be too long. But I, it has to be said. Um... I told some people to come up and come open and say they said no they, are, they don't have the liver now let us the ones that have liver say it the way it is um we should start having conversations divide and conquer is what they are using to destroy us rwanda has fixed their own problem there's no such thing as tribe in rwanda we have to get to that point even if even if, because I know the the, the 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 middle belt also want a referendum, because they don't like how go on and just just sat down with ruler to divide Nigeria. Even if we get a referendum and want to be a nation of our own, we still need to scrap that. You see that clan tribe, Obusi that no Obusi, Anambra na no Anambra. We need to scrap all those nonsense because before then it was just the eastern states. But the more they divided us, the more we saw reasons why we shouldn't be together. The more we fought ourselves, the more we could never unite ourselves to fight oppression. The more we could not unite ourselves to fight oppression. Now, there's this guy, Fred Hampton, a Black Panther, um, after Martin Luther was killed. He did form the Rainbow Coalition, went to the, the, the Confederates, went to different clans and the Mexicans and formed a coalition because he said the problem was not the races. The problem was capitalism. The problem was fascism, was those in authority who were... So we need to realize what the real problem is before we can find what the solution is. The problem is not Fulani Hetzman or, or, or that guy, that laid back, lazy man, Buari. It's not the problem. You know, um, it's it's like a lot of people are going to be angry with me because oh why why is he talking about why is he talking about this? See, I will say it because first of all, nobody's paying me my nobody's paying my rent, nobody's feeding me, nobody's paying my data, nobody's is 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 is, is um what's, what's what's the word now supporting me and say bro you need money nothing so I will say it because it has to be said. They incited, they poisoned the mind of the northerners against the southerners, especially Igbos. That's the British. Let's get it clear. They used media to paint us evil, and the northerners unfortunately believed it. Now, they already incited because we were educated. We were 
we were at the helm of affairs doing things leading which is fine if you're the one who is reading more then you should lead which is normal but no um it became like oh the evils are domineering and then we even started saying it like it's a normal thing and then there was a coup why why do a coup that is not going to be successful why why even okay it's happened so let's not talk about why Veronsi stepped in, declared himself supreme leader. Fine. Maybe he was trying to solve the problem, but guess what? Another problem was he now unified the government. This same gov, this same um, 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 unified system of government that we are complaining about was one of our own that set it up. Veronsi. Then there was tension between Ojuku and. Um, uh, go on now naturally Igbos like to be everywhere we are everywhere we don't have a home that's just the way we are we're in the north we're in Kafanchan we're in, 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 in Bermuda Triangle we're everywhere so we had a number in the army but the Yorubas did not have quite that number in the army because that's just the nature we are everywhere so the majority of the military was Igbos. And then when um, the Sardana of Sokoto was killed, the Igbo officers and then the other northerners who were in the place started gloating. I don't know what kind of devil will enter your head. And then you've just done something. Then you're now making noise, thinking that you had power. Of course, Islam permits them to kill you without thinking. He started. We are blaming, oh, they killed us. No, we incited them to kill us. We killed them. Now say, yeah, 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 something you can do. See, eh, how do you even make this thing make sense? You come to my house. Oh, no, I come to your house. And I punch you in the face. And I tell you, do your worst. Oh, yo, if you use your knife on me or gun on me, it's on me. I cost it because I'm saying do your worst. And that is what we did. We gloated. Hey, yeah, 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 he's dead. And then we triggered these guys who have already been poisoned, whose minds had already been poisoned by whoever it is. And it was easy. It was an easy kill. Very easy kill. We retaliated. Nobody talks about that. They killed the southerners, not just the Igbos, but of course, uh, BBC said Igbos. Like I said, the narrative was being painted to sound a certain way. After that happened, Ojuku and his body, go on, wanted peace. They did not trust any part of Niger because, of course, if you've been doing ku 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 meeting everywhere, you don't know who to trust. Ghana said, Come. Ghana has always been a brother. Come, let's come and use Aburi. They went to Aburi. But Ojuku meant business, went very prepared, typical Igbo man, very prepared, meant business, went with secretary, went with lawyers, and then presented Abu Accord, presented his term, and then they agreed. It wasn't just him and Gowon, people from um, um, this uh, Oba, Kiambari, is it Kiambari or whatever, one of the Edo people, did not, every region was represented there. It was a good deal. Gowon goes back home. Now, don't forget that Gowon is Christian. Jacob. Yakubu is Christian and he's even a minority, not Hausa. Gowan is a minority. And he goes back. Of course, the majority told him, What the hell do you mean? And people never said the British was involved. And <laughs> they were involved in that as well. Because that was the beginning of the oil boom. That was when oil was discovered. So yeah, the British had a hand in that. And then they Suddenly, Gowon becomes a tyrant, begins to change plans, begins to say, no, this has got to be, that's got to be, this has got to be. Um, and then sends battalions to mount, like, like, you know, to go and lay siege, like in Lagos. Of course, Lagos succumbed because Yoruba people did not have a lot of people in the army. So they just had to succumb. And then we call them saboteurs. Nah, hold on. So they should come. Oh, let's be let's be realistic. So the Yoruba person should have, because there was an Aburi Accord, and then 
they already knew about the crews and the killings going on. They should now say, oh, no, no, we still stand with Taburi, we still stand with Taburi, and then they wipe them off. For what? And we call them Sabo. We should stop that. Um, they saw that there was no hope of fighting against these people who were already angered and incited and who had the backing of the British. They didn't do anything. It do state the same thing. It now came to our turn. Of course, we had the, we had the number. They already massacred most of us, but we had the number. Now, look at the way we tell the story. Like my dad would say, we say they lined us up and killed us. Yes, the people that incited them in the north, they killed them like that. So let's paint the picture well. And then, um, Ojuku had already made up his mind that on a certain day, he was going to declare Biafra. Now, Ojuku already understood, because he was an intelligent man, that the British was going to be against us. Ojuku already understood that doing that was treason to the sovereignty of Nigeria. We went ahead to declare Biafra an independent state. Why? Because there was an agreement. I get it. They had changed. Hey, I don't know. Stop calling me. So there was an agreement. They came back, dissolved it. Every other region followed suit. But the Igbos. And Kalaba, why bomb? Asimba, I get your war. We now went to war. And about three million people died. Let me tell you this part of the story that people don't tell. So we say there was no relief material sent to young people while young people were dying of Koshoko. Yes, 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 they were. But guess what? While some were dying of Kwashoko, some were feasting from the relief funds. They were coming. Um, we have been our greatest enemy. We have been the devil that has cut ourselves in pieces by ourselves. I mean the South, not just the evils, the South. We have been the ones stabbing ourselves on the foot. We've been the ones bringing curses upon our heads because children were starving, but some people were feasting and having fun. Now, there are even stories of people who would know that their son should go for war. They will now conscript somebody who is like um, a young person who doesn't have a dad. They will lead the person and lure the person to be a soldier. Kai, the things we did in the name of survival, I don't think, you know how people are saying um, America is cursed because you know maybe the blood of the of the uh, of the Native Americans and and the slaves are speaking up against us. You know, it's the same thing with with the Igbos. Our hands are not clean. When I say clean up the house, I know what I'm saying. Our hands are not clean. Igbos have done worse than the house niggas did. You know those people who would. Be, do the, be doing the, the doing of the bidding of the masters, Igbos have done worse than that. The southerners, not just Igbos, we've done worse. The food for people were hoarded by a select few and eaten. Well, and then the annoying part is where we now um, spiritualize everything and deify the tribe Igbos being a superior race that God is behind us that God is backing us up that is the worst set of um, what's the word for that is it pride or indolence that even when you're sinning you still do not want to repent you're reprobate and say God has got your back how the hell does God have your back when you are look at the look at the state of of of, of the Igbo states look at the Igbo states who are those leaders? Are they not your brothers, your uncles, our fathers and our mothers? When things are going well, we celebrate them, we collect, we close our mouth. Now, we are as corrupt as corruption itself. I'm calling it out because we are here saying our hands are clean, our hands are clean. Our hands are not clean. Our hands are dirty, filled with blood, not just uh, and see, blood. 
it's so annoying that we pretend or we allow ourselves to believe that our hands are clean this is not me being divisive this is me saying mature no and can fix your house you cannot be shouting uh, equity 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 he that must come to equity must come with clean hands are your hands clean hey <sighs> i digress so we went to war and I said we should have never gone to war. People are like, how dare you say that? There's this guy. I think it's um, it's one of these warriors that said, um, the foolish will do in war. The foolish do what the wise. It takes the foolish some time to do what the wise will do immediately. Here's what it means. The Yorubas, the Edo, other tribes succumbed. You can live to fight another day. But the Igbos and the Kalaba and the Delta Igbo were stubborn. We went to war. But we still later succumbed. So why the hell? Can you tell me why the hell we went to war if we would eventually succumb? Do you understand the logic now? Does it even make sense? Ego. Fighting for your pride. Not for the, not for the longevity of your people. But you're fighting for pride. Every single person, my father, Juku, everybody that has talked about that war, even people that were not in that war, talk about it from the sense of pride. We had to go to war. They were not killing us anymore. That's not the point. They were killing every single person. We went to war because the state of Biafra was declared. That was war itself. Now, Guy and guy, friends, now turned enemies. It was a display of balls. Who has the bigger balls? That's all it was. Okay, I will declare after we have the numbers. So we thought we had the numbers. We thought we had the backings. It was the wrong calculation, man. We did not calculate well now. We did not calculate well. Let's call these things what they are. The reason it has to be corrected, the reason, you know how we were told that Thomas Edison was the one that invented the light bulb and that's what we thought all our lives. Meanwhile, it was Louis Latimer that invented the light bulb. So the moment you realize it's Louis Latimer, your perspective changes, everything changes, right? Now, you begin to know that black people are also smart. You begin to know that there was a civilization before the Greeks, before the Greek, Egypt was actually originally black, it's still black. But even Israel was black. People say it's, it's brown. Mm -mm. Check very well. Check. There, there are articles online. Black. Right? If you read Songs of Solomon, it talked about them being black. Oh, um, uh, the sun has burnt my skin. I'm dark. People without melanin don't get dark. They get red. They get burned. We get dark when we expose to the sun. Read the Bible. It's there. Now, everything has been changed for a reason. So that we think that the black race is inferior and stupid. Now, it's the same thing they came to impose on us. We are bringing light to the kingdom of darkness. Continent of darkness. The dark continent. How dare you? Where Ethiopia already has a version that is 800 years older than whatever the hell it is you brought to us. Now I'm talking to white people. Let me talk back to us. So... We don't know these things. The moment you begin to see things differently, every other thing begins to make sense. Stop whining and calling. And anytime we point you towards a direction, you nya 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 nya. Are you saying it's okay to us to be killed? Are you? Hell no. But what I'm saying is, Islam permits you to wipe out the people. Christianity actually does too the crusades we did that because how that's how we were pillaged we were pillaged in the name of christ <laughs> africa was was enslaved in the name of the lord you know right africa was enslaved african americans were enslaved in the name of the lord so christianity is a violent religion very violent religion but you do the turn the right cheek or turn the left the people who actually have done retaliation are the people who when Igbos were killed in the north, went back to kill Hausa people. Now, that's not that's more like Judaism than it is Christianity. 
an IPOP, for example, is more Judaist than it's Christian because that's why they believe in retaliation while you are busy saying, oh, God, deliver us, pray, save us. So Christians are there praying. Judaists are there fighting. The point is that this war will never end until enemies sit down and discuss. For peace to reign, you have to talk to the enemy not to your friend now enemy is relative enemy is just somebody who is opposing you who you think is different which means we start with amongst you, ourselves tribes that are southern that don't like ourselves we begin to talk about these things talk about where we feel hurt we apologize what we're supposed to oh yeah we apologize everybody apologizes you close that chapter you move to the next if you don't have conversations you're not going to heal if you don't heal, you'll be toxic till you die. And you pass that same nasty energy down to your children, who will pass it down to your children's children. At the end of the day, your aim is defeated. Guess what? You're still a messed up clan or a messed up generation of people. You're still as useless as you didn't want to be. <sighs> there are elites in the North that understand what happened. But they only understand a version of the story. The North actually truly believe that it was an Igbo invasion. They do not believe that ideally the plan was to wipe out all the leaders, including Zeke and Obara. They don't believe that because everything points. There is a difference between impression and intention. Our intention was to wipe out the corrupt leaders. Now I said our. I wasn't even there. Yeah, but I own it because it was one of us, South, right? Our intention was to wipe out the corrupt, to purge the system of corruption. But the impression was dominating Nigeria because after we killed everybody, next thing we didn't kill our own, next thing one of us becomes a leader, and then next thing he unifies the government, meaning I now control the system. If you don't see it like this, what else do you want me to tell you? Like, how don't you see this? And you're saying, oh, they killed 80,000 Igbos. Meanwhile, it's 30,000 anyway. They killed 80,000. No, they killed 30,000 Southerners, not just Igbos. Because when you do this, what happens is you try to trivialize the pain of other people that were killed because they know they were killed. And you're, you're, you're indirectly creating enemies of allies. You're making enemies of allies. People who are supposed to be your allies are now enemies because you're now saying you don't matter. I matter. My problem is more than your own. Meanwhile, they were killed. Not just you. Do you see how that's turning out? Like, the problem is that it's even the younger generation that should be smarter, that are very sentimental, without direction, holding on to the past fables that they were told. Oh, it's in a book. Eh, who writes a book? It's not one person. So because it's in a book, it's now law. Eh, so why don't you believe in the Quran if it's the book? No, let it make sense. So because it's in a book, it's now law. Somebody sat down and wrote the version of his own story or her own story, and then it's law. Don't you know you're supposed to compare as an adult, have sense, and compare things to sieve the wheat from the chaff? Is that not what Moses told you to do? Out of the mouth of two or three wheat witnesses is that not what paul that you had idolized told you to do prove all things hold on to that which is true now the Berean christians were more noble than those of thessalonica because after paul and Silas had preached to them your apostle of grace they received the word of god with openness open mind but went back daily to search the scriptures to see if paul was lying or not lying oh they had to cross check paul so the moment you take away verification the moment you take away um, quality assurance what are you building nonsense now you have to test what you're doing it's part in 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 software development life cycle it's part of the process after documentation design development deployment before deployment guys testing you have to test to see what you're doing if it's right or wrong test all spirits test all spirits test everything now the time I had this conversation with my dad in a way about uh, three, four weeks ago, you know, I told him, do you remember the story of the prophet in First Kings? The nameless prophet? He said, yeah. I said, God told him, I don't know, maybe it's God or his mind, 
Go and tell Ahab this. Go and tell him that if he goes to war, he's not going to survive. Now, I have given them, all the prophets, they are a lying spirit. So they will resist you. But after you are done talking, don't stop to eat. Don't even say hello. Just find your way back. And then he went, did his job. On his way back, this old prophet could be an old fable, old story, old belief, old ideology, old narrative. Suddenly shows up and says, hey, his son's telling all oh, that the guy is going to say, oh, um, I heard, I heard you said, I heard God told you not to eat here. He said, yeah, 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 I'm on my way out of here, man. I got to go. And then he says, no, no, no. The old prophet says, no, but God actually says you should come and eat with me. And God said, um, unfortunately, he did not verify. He went, wasn't even persuaded that long and ate with this old prophet. Guess what? On his way back, a lion found him and ate him and killed him. It was the old prophet that went and buried him. Why am I saying this? Sometimes, because something has been said for too long, you begin to think it's the truth. Now, when somebody comes with something different, you call him heretic, or you call him divisive, or you call him something else. Unfortunately, it's the same thing the Pharisees did. Jesus shows up, begins to ask a lot of questions, begins to act all weird, say things that are not normal, that they were not used to saying, and then they compared with their whatever. Oh, that the Messiah is supposed to come from Bethlehem, but you're Nazarene. Uh, but ideally, Jesus was from Bethlehem. But they didn't do the extra effort to verify. They just left it. This is all we've always known. We're not going to check it. We're not going to change it. This is who we are. We are the same yesterday, to and forever. We can never change. <laughs> that sounds very familiar. So when you begin to resist change, when you begin to, you see, like when we we're growing up, they'll tell us, oh, don't discuss with Amma, Amma Jehovah. Don't discuss with um, Jehovah's Witness. Don't discuss with any of them. That was toxic because you have to sit down with these other Christians to be able to divide the word rightly and then remove all the chaff and nonsense because if you're listening to all that nonsense you're listening to every day why wouldn't you be brainwashed see here eh? unfortunately most of us Igbos are christians or do i say fortunately and did christ not tell you if you're about to give your offering and recall that someone has something against you leave your offering go and settle with the person and come back Okay, now, the not has something against us. The not says we killed them first. The not says this. So, why don't we, as Christians, no, no, as Christians, okay, leave our offering, leave church for one whole month and go start having conversations with these people? Why don't we do that now? I'm not the one that said it, though. I, I, am I preaching or am I even... I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Am I preaching to Christians? Or am I talking to evil people? Because I don't even know the difference anymore. We are a stubborn bunch. Reprobate minds. Reprobate. Like hearts seared with hot iron. Our consciences are dead. Because how? How? How do you even say something is corrupt? We're telling you that your fathers and your uncles are our leaders. You say, that's not the problem. We want a nation of our own. So that your fathers and uncles will also become leaders again and enslave us. How? We have dead consciences. Our consciences are freaking dead. I think it's by going to church and shouting Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, Yahweh. The same Yahweh, Yahweh that my father preached and you people had ostracized him. Said he had backsliding and now thinking Yahweh, Yahweh in church. Let me not even get to that point. The thing is, we have to. Why do I keep talking about conversations? Because that's not what Jesus thought. Jesus said, if your brother offends you, go and tell him. He didn't say carry it in your heart and wait for the right time. Oh, honey, I'm waiting till he's... Go and tell him his fault or her fault. He didn't say go and plead. Say go and tell him his fault. That's the assertive style of communication. There's passive, there's passive aggressive, there's aggressive. You know, I met a nurse in this country when I moved here who thought it was just three of them, passive, passive, aggressive, and aggressive. And that was the reason why it was okay for a black woman to say, I'm not aggressive, I'm a strong woman. No, you're freaking aggressive. So I said, no, 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 there's another one assertive. She was like, no, there's no. I said, hold on, there's another one. Now, like I said, 
Your mindset determines your life. If your mind is set on the fact that there are just three, and you can't be passive or passive aggressive, of course you're going to choose aggressive. But then when you realize that there's a fault, what you should do as a human being that has common sense is to reset your life and start the better one. So I told about a certain style of communication does to do. Go and tell him his fault. He didn't say attack the personality. Don't say, this is what you're always doing. You always, mm -mm, honey, or hey, bro, I don't like the way you talked about this today. This is how I feel about it. Talk about the issue, not about the person. Don't attack the character. Don't say we flee for you, we judge you are not here. Mm -mm. Nah, I don't like how you're saying this. Why are you saying this? Then you debate based on what's going on. Now, if the person doesn't listen or if the person is not able to see that he has offended you or she has offended you, go and tell somebody else. And then together, you tell the person the fault. Now, if now the reason you should tell somebody else is by the time you're telling somebody else, the person would know whether it's really a fault or not a fault. But this is not a big deal now. But if it's a big deal, oh, they now come and say, hey, you tell the same person the fault. Now, if that person doesn't listen, you go to the authorities. Now, it could be the church leadership in our present day. Me, I will say call 911. It could be 911. It could be National Domestic Violence Hotline. It could be anybody. Reach out to the authorities. Now, if they reach out to this person and the person is still adamant, treat the person like an unbeliever. That means don't expect anything good from the person, which means you just have to become patient, long-suffering with this person. Me, I'll say avoid. I'll just run away. This is what Christ has taught us to do. I don't know why it's always this week is your week. You people listen to in church. These are the things that should form basic lifestyles that will help a society grow. What we have are people who don't want to be told what to do, but we want to tell you what to do. Or parents who will not listen to their kids their tyrants is all authoritarian and dictatorship and then by the time the kids grow up they find themselves in the same situation they don't speak up because you don't talk to elders in nigeria you have to always you can never talk back they call it talking back so you don't correct anybody even when something is wrong you enjoy it and be saying god god will help me god will help me which god will help you the god that has told you to go and tell the person of his fault so like i said there's a lot we have to have these conversations we have to have these conversations if not as anything as christians if not as christians as people who want the future for our children me i don't have a child so i really don't care i care so see ya. go and read up history leave what you know leave that thing you think is the truth go and read up history every side of the story Listen to every side of the story and start having these conversations. I didn't even know that that's what the Oputa panel was for. You know, that was what it was for at the beginning, to have these conversations. But by then, nobody knew about healing, mental health and everything. So it just phased, phased off. We have to start having these conversations. And I don't mean straight to national level. Even with your friends, with your family, with your neighbors, you have to start having these conversations. I just met somebody when I went to um, do my shift and... Um, I was staying there and this other African guy takes the cart up. I'm still on my phone. I wasn't paying attention. Then this Hispanic girl now starts lining up carts like four to take up. I was like, oh no, come on now. You want me to help do this? I'm not going to do it. So another guy, black guy helped her and then took his. I was like, oh, come on. Now I have to follow you guys. I now took my own cart upstairs. And I now said, oh, this is how um, good deeds are done. One person starts it and everybody follows suit. So that guy started, the girl now did more than this guy did and I did. And eventually, this guy comes to the side to load up his car. And he says, what's your name? I say Dika, D-I-K-A, because you have to spell it in this country. And he, I think I heard him say something. He asked, oh, the Nigerian B, Pigeon. Oh, the guy was Nigeria, Nigerian. And I now said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What part? And I should have never asked that question because the moment I asked, I was like, oh crap, I shouldn't have. I hate asking that question. He said it was Yoruba. I said, because it's very divisive. Why can't we just be Nigerians? You know, um, he says, that's a problem that, you know, these things are divisive. And I said, yeah, Rwanda has struck off tribes. People are just Rwandans. 
this whole tribe stuff is causing problem. Oh yeah, but Igbo is superior. Okay. Mwano. Mwago amose mobosi na no obosi. Mini ni man obosi ko no ma. Or is it um where um um who are this very um these guys that 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 have all the skill and the intellect um where this car you know this car guy is from navy navy people are smarter now so like are we going to say okay they are better than us because we will still find a way to divide ourselves why oh i'm from anambra oh i'm from edo can't we just all be Igbo or nigerian because that is the first step to freedom take off that socialist take off that classism whatever for, forces classism to come upon people take it away we'll be niger or we'll be biafra whatever even when you become biafra strike out that whole you see that whole anambra enugu edo ebony like strike that in out because at the end of the day you're just undoing yourself so biko i'm tired of talking it's gone from from admonition to preaching i don't even know what i'm doing anymore but i'm angry very angry because people who are supposed to be smart are all sentimental how dare you say that are you saying that they killed us they should have killed us like that's all you pick from all the posts i'm making yo what are you eh even a child will behave better what are you guys I write the post, you just pick one line and you are squeezing your face. Eh, because what is going on with you people? If I was a stranger, then that's different. I'm talking about people that know me personally. I'm not even talking about strangers. Strangers, I don't give a shit. I'm like, what is wrong with you? You don't like to be told something different? Please. Well, I go, I'll, I'll, I'll talk transformer. Because... I will still say them. I will say it all until maybe Facebook blocks me. I will keep saying it the way it is. And I will say what you don't want to hear until you listen. Then, auntie. We are this full man. Let's dissolve the country. Buari has said it like 27th of June or whatever. Or was it even May? Come, let's divide the country. The same day he said, Onye dot. A dot, a small dot in a circle. We made a big deal of the small dot in a circle, but we've not still sent people to divide the country. He said, Some people want us to divide the country. They should come, let's discuss the terms of the solution. Nobody has a gun, no. Nobody has a gun. We are still here bickering and doing different things. And now it is not the canon that has been arrested. It's now the focus, Abi. Why are we like this now? Why are we like this? The thing we are fighting for, he has said, Come. Nobody has gone. Why? Our house is not in order. Who will go? Which means we have to go back and get our, our house in order. And what the hell have I been saying since? Like seriously. And a cool and a counter. And I for me. Like focus for Christ's sake. The thing you're fighting for has been presented to you. Send somebody. But who will I send? Who will go? Who? That they are blaming the north. Don't go and get your house in order. Because no. Bye bye. I've lost my voice anyway.